I will be a witness to you in the world, O Lord. I will spread the knowledge of your name among my brothers and sisters. Alleluia. Dear friends in Christ, on this Saint George's Day, we offer this Holy Mass of Healing. We would normally celebrate this Mass on the last Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. in the morning in the Lady Chapel. And it's a very quiet, informal Mass. We normally sit around in front of the altar in a semicircle of chairs. And nobody has to stand or sit or we just be. So today I am recording this Mass so you might uh, participate when it's convenient for you. I'll say more about St George and healing in a moment. But first let us prepare ourselves to offer this Holy Mass to the glory of God and for God's healing in our lives and the lives of those for whom we pray this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with us and keep us in the love of Christ. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed <coughs> to do what we ought to have done. We are truly sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, set us free from sin and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has forgiven you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers of those who praise your mighty power. And as St. George was ready to follow Christ in suffering and in death and proclaim the glory of his resurrection, so may he be ready to help us in our weakness as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. The one sitting on the throne spoke, now I am making the whole of creation new. He said, write this, that is what I am saying is sure and will come true. And then he said, it is already done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give water from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. It is the rightful inheritance of the one who proves victorious. And I will be the people's God, and they shall be my people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Part of Psalm 126. Those who are sowing in tears, will sing when they reap. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The heathens themselves said, what marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage, as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out, full of tears, 
carrying the seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Alleluia, alleluia. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ because it means that you have the Spirit of God resting upon you. Alleluia. The Lord be with us. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. To all, Jesus said, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let them renounce themselves, take up their cross every day and follow me. For anyone who wants to save their life will lose it. But anyone who loses their life for my sake, that person will save it. What gain is it then for someone to have won the whole world and to have lost or ruined their very self? For if anyone is ashamed of me and of my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory, and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. <clears throat> this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. St. George, a very popular saint and martyr in Greece and around Jerusalem and North Africa. <coughs> Not a lot really, like all these great saints, is known about him. But what we do know about him impressed upon the early church a reverence for strength in faithfulness. A few facts. George was actually a Roman soldier from the province of Cappadocia, which is a Greek community in uh, modern day Turkey. And he was a very high ranking officer in the Roman army. And he became a Christian. And on this day, in the year AD 303, he was martyred for his faith at Lydda in the Holy Land. Initially, he resigned his post as an officer in the Roman army in protest that the Roman army, the officials, wouldn't allow practicing Christians in their ranks. He was known for his firm faith and for miracles resulting from the faithful's intercession to George, asking him to pray to Christ to overcome difficulties and challenges in their lives. And he was known as early as 730-ish in the uh, British Isles by the Venerable Bede who wrote of him. But I guess our best image, our best known story of George is a knight of great valour, a knight winning his spurs in the stories of old we used to sing in school in that famous hymn. And there is that, of course that myth that he slaughtered a dragon to save a young maiden. Well, that is all kind of poetic imagery. And it points to the fact that George was a Christian who put his faith in Christ above his own personal career and in the end his own personal safety. The faith of George was so 
admirable and striking. But Edward III decided to put the whole of the English army under George's patronage. Perhaps that was not quite the interpretation of the strength that George revealed in God's name. However, from that point, the Oxford Synod in 1222 decided that he would be the patron of this country. And Edward III even adopted his flag, the white flag with the red cross on it, as the emblem of England. The white flag with the red cross, of course, was the sign of the resurrection. In our east window over the high altar at Holy Trinity here in Hallfield, if you look at the right-hand side, the panel depicting the resurrection, Christ is bursting from the tomb and he's holding a flagpole with a red and white flag on it. It is the symbol of the resurrection. So what has all that got to do with healing? Well here on the makeshift rectory altar is a little glass vessel with the oil of the sick, the oil we use for healing. And in this purple book are the names of the prayer intentions of people who have asked for prayers daily and a copy of our pew sheet with our current sick and deceased and the holy oil is resting on that book on the altar because like everything else in these weird and strange times I can't gather you in the lady chapel lay hands upon you and pray upon you and anoint you with the holy oil but what we can do is we can pause for a moment and be inspired by the faith of George the dragon slaying image meant that George had so great a faith that nothing seemed too powerful for his faith to overcome and that's how he lived his life and that's why he died for Christ on this day in AD 303. So if we think about it, I'm sure we can think of dragons that loom large, rampaging through our lives. Those difficult and challenging situations, some of them may be one-offs, like a sudden serious illness or a challenging event in our lives. Others may just kind of drip feed their way through our lives. The same kind of challenge, dealing with the same issue, the same illness, caring for uh, a relative who is simply not going to get better. And it requires really a determined faith because we're in it for the long haul. So whatever we find, ourselves in in terms of positions of adversity let us bring all those things to the Lord and inspired by the great faith and courage in faith of George let us place our faith of equal might in God's healing love shown to us through the risen Christ in whose name we pray Amen and so we pray for all who have asked for our prayers we pray for for Nat and Mick Jesse and Olivia, for David Ratcliffe, for Hilary Wilson and her family, for Joe, for Ian's granddaughter, 
van der Scherver, for Maureen Wooten, for Andy and his family, Peter Crocker, John Crocker and Michael Crocker, for Dennis Terry and Cathy Wright, for Neville Brind and Julia, for Robert Britton, for Jason Victory and his family, for Errol Lloyd Parry, for Peter and Matthew Stock, for Val and Cliff and Catherine and Laura, and in a moment of silent compassion, all who are held in our hearts in prayer this day. God of love, hear our prayer. And we pray for the souls of the faithful departed. Remembering Ken Humphreys, priest, and Margaret Moyle. And in our year's mind, Dorothy Stock. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in Christ, in glory. Amen. And so merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, <coughs> Jesus Christ. Amen. Like the first disciples, before the coming of God's power at Pentecost, we wait in faith and pray for those whom we have just named for their healing, for our healing, for the healing of our nation and our world. Remembering especially today those who are the healers, our NHS workers and carers and key workers and those who simply watch and wait in silent, faithful hope beside those for whom they pray and those whom they love. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Nothing can separate us from your love. Be with us as of old. Fill us with your power. Direct all our thoughts to your goodness. Come, Holy Spirit, bring faith, healing and peace. name of God Most High. We place all we have named and those whom we hold on our hearts in prayer this day into your healing hands, that they may receive Christ's healing touch, making them whole in body, mind and spirit, being strengthened by the power of God. and being enfolded by the love of God who gives us peace. Amen. <coughs> God our healer, keep us aware of your presence. Support us with your power. Comfort us with your protection. Give us strength and establish us in your peace. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for giving us this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God for ever. <coughs> By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share the truth.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for giving us this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, by this holy exchange of gifts, you share with us your divine life. Grant that everything we do may be directed by the knowledge <coughs> of your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right wherever we are to thank you and to praise you, God our Father and King forever, through Jesus Christ your Son. Through him you made us and the whole universe. When your Holy Spirit came to Mary, Jesus was born as, of one, as one of us. He loved us so much that he died for us. On the first Easter day you raised him to life, and death and evil were conquered forever. At Pentecost you gave the Holy Spirit, as Jesus promised, to help us live as your children. So here on earth, with angels and archangels, and with everyone in heaven, we praise your name and say, Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we make in Jesus' name. Through the Holy Spirit's power, gentle as a dove, may this bread and this wine be for us Jesus' body and blood. Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, All of you drink from this cup, because this is my blood. The new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it, to remember me. Together we remember Jesus is always with us and say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, as we remember your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again, we offer you these and all the gifts you freely give to us. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us, and all who share this bread and drink from this cup. Help us to trust you, bring us closer together, and welcome us with all your people into Jesus' glorious kingdom. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. In order to be like him, Jesus taught us to pray like him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, 
We are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. we join together in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I long to enfold you within my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord says, I have chosen you from the world to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with us. God be your comfort and your strength. God be your hope and your support. God be your light and your way. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us be in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.